Welcome back, everybody. Quick update. I actually had to go through three different KVMs to get this to work, but this is now in a KVM, so I can have, I'm just gonna leave that, that one there for now, because I'm always testing out different cards and whatnot in there, especially now that it has DOS on it, so that'll be a great computer to just leave there. I think it gives me a little more shelf room anyway. And then I've got another spot for hooking up this benchmark computer if I want to, or whatever else I need to. So that gives me three total spots to hook up machines and head. Oh, excuse me. Ah, just woke up recently and still not completely awake yet. So we've got a full day today and hoping to get right to it. I guess a few things we could work on. I've got a bunch of broken laptops. I'm not 100% sure about. Got a even more broken laptops. Got some Palm Pilots. I don't know. Let's see. Let's look around for a good project. Probably out will work on a Palm Pilot because I've been using this uh, this Zire, and honestly, it's kind of crap. Um, it works okay for just general planning stuff, but. The graffiti handwriting recognition on the tiny little plastic screen that these have is awful. It's so hard for me to get used to. Maybe it's good for other people, but having grown up with graffiti one, I just can't. I can't figure it out. Um, so trying to write like a memo or something, it just took forever. And the other thing is, if I if I'm writing a whole bunch on here, it'll just freeze. Solid, and there's no reset pin included with it. So. I think we're going to go back to an OS 4 or an older Palm, and we'll get around to that, but yeah, I got to go digging through here and find an interesting project for today. We got to do something cool. All right, I've got a good project to start on, I think. So this computer was up on my shelf in the original like tour of the office video, whatever, and it's it's a used one I picked up. As you can see, the, the CD drive, something happened to them, they're off their tracks, but basically what I was interested in with this computer was this, the motherboard. So it's a, it's a nice gigabyte AGP 8X board. Um, it does have SATA ports, which is kind of fun. And it's kind of dusty, but it is a, uh, I always forget what this is called, the socket 478 board and I don't really have one of these um, these processors in the in the collection this was really the I if I understand correctly one of the fastest processors that supported AGP still so um, for for example we've got some of the socket like the LGA 775 boards where they have that's the one so this is this is one of the, the processors I keep around. And as you can see, this is this is one of the sockets where you can you can insert CPU. It still has pins that you put in here, and then you clamp it down. After this, this is the last generation they did this. After this, they went to these, which where the basically the pins are stored are. Oh, come on, focus, you stupid camera. Okay, where the the pins are on the motherboard, and I'll show you one later but the CPU is completely flat there and you kind of clamp it down in there and clamp it to the pins on the board um, and they've been using this mounting mechanism ever since so we've got a couple of processors that we can try it out I think this came with a Celeron or something but um, I want to put something a little faster in there and so I'm gonna clean this up and get out some of the parts and then we'll we'll get to testing it see if it works all right, got some parts laid out here. So first of all, the CPUs. Um, so one of the dangers of putting off projects for forever is that sometimes the CPUs vanish and that's what happened to me. So I went through the parts box and have dug out these three. And these two, I'm struggling to read what's on there. These two are Pentium, or uh, Celeron Ds from 2004. And we've got one at 
um, one at 2.5 and one at 2.6 gigahertz respectively and then this is from 2001 but it's a uh, Pentium 4 2.5 3 gigahertz and strangely enough this one I mean I've got stacks of these pen these Celeron D's but this one is basically exactly the same core as these even though it's three years earlier it's exactly the same thing they just cut half the cash off of these and used it for um, as a budget offering later on. I do not have on me a hyper-threading capable version or um, or anything with a faster clock, but I think that'll make for a good video later. I just want to test this motherboard out, see if any, see if this setup is even working, and then later we can try upgrading the processor, see what results we get. Um, so for now, I think we're going to go with that. I've already got it plugged into the testing power supply. Over here, I've got my fastest AGP card, which is, I believe, a, yeah, it's VT2400 Pro. 512 megabyte, good for XP, I think. You can see one capacitor sticking out a little higher, and that's because um, this one had a, had a memory error on it. I did, I think I did bake it, and it did... Uh, had a bad capacitor as well and I replaced that. I think that's just a filter cap. I think it ran without it just fine but I replaced it anyway just to be safe. And uh, we're also going to be using, hopefully using, two gigabytes of DDR4 memory here. DDR, wow. DDR400. DDR1. 400 megahertz. Um, for a hard drive I'm not 100% sure yet but I will keep you posted. So I'm going to get this all set up on the bench and see if it works and then we will come back. Interesting problem here. What happens when you have an old CPU with one of these uh, with the pins sticking out? Okay, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. It is hard to do that stably. That's a little bit better. What happens when you get a hair stuck in one and you can't pull it out with your fingers? Toothbrush. Yes, not static resistant, but it'll pull the hair right out. Just be gentle. There you go. That's all there is to it. So we've got it together and it's running and it did take me a couple of tries. Um, I thought my video card wasn't working and then it turned out that I switched it for a video card that really was not working and so that didn't help. Um, and then it took me, I had to grab this, um, this plug and plug it in as well. Um, plug. This is the speaker to get the beep codes and that was telling me that the video card wasn't working still so I was really confused and then it turned out that I forgot to plug the power in for the video card and the power in for the CPU. With both of those plugged in, here we are. Looks like it's working with that, uh, that old 2001 processor and the, the 2020, 2020, the two gigabytes of RAM. Wow. Anyway, I will be back in a little bit and we will start building this into the computer that we're going to be using it in. Here it is. I, um, I'm terrible at... Well, I mean, first of all, I don't have a tripod that gets up here, so... Um, I didn't really know how to film this, but... You can probably hear the power supply making that weird noise, even though it's off. That's comforting. <laughs> wow, all right. Well, it seems to work all right, so I think for right now we'll just keep going with it. It's not like I don't have some replacements if it blows. Um, yeah, so far a good battery. Um, I used a, a SATA 1 drive from 2005. It's an old Western Digital with like, the, I think it's 80 gigabytes, but it's got like six platters in it. And we've got the VT2000 in here, VE whatever it was. Stuck this giant fan in here, and I've just got some uh, HVAC tape on it. And ultimately, this this one's going to be closed a lot, so I'm not super worried about it. But and I'll do the whole montage and everything later. But so far, I'm pretty happy with it. It's just got the stock cooler on it, but it does support overclocking, so we'll see if we can push it a little bit. Um, just bus overclocking, and and pinning fours aren't great for it, but um, given the the architecture being as bad as it is, it's not a bad idea to, to try and get a little bit more, um, you know, base clock out of it, so, got 
the hard drive hooked up to SATA. We've got a card reader on the front of this thing as well, and then I did go ahead and hook up the, the rear USB panel expansion that was on the other. So far it all works okay. This is a cool case. It's got a, a panel that slides up and down. It's really big. This is going to be one that's going to go in the collection under the desk. But for now I'm going to get it moved over to the, the um, desk over here. And then we'll get a tripod set up and start installing windows on it. Really quick, I ended up adding a second hard drive because I realized this board supports onboard RAID, so I think we're going to go with a, a RAID 0 setup just to see if it you know, helps the helps the speed any, and just for the coolness factor. I mean, I've got some dedicated RAID, RAID cards over there that might do a better job, but at the same time, then I'd have to be running everything through a PCI slot instead of going through um, whatever bus this is on. So we're just going to go with the uh, hardware RAID controller that's built into the board, and I'll be using Easy to Boot to install it. Which is a it's a USB flash drive utility that automatically detects the drivers and sideloads them into XP as you're booting it, so you don't need to go find the drivers and put them on a floppy and all that garbage. So, um, and again, you'll hear me talking about stuff I learned about on Phil's Computer Lab. His stuff is awesome, guys. So if you ever, you know, maybe I'll see if I can find a link to his video in the description. But if you haven't seen. Um, easy to boot. He has a couple of videos about how to do it and it works great for um, for this kind of stuff. I first learned about it doing it on a on a couple of like old tablet PC type of things that had a really weird um, SATA controller. So works great. Takes all the work out of it. Anyway, so I'm going to get that set up. I'm just going to kind of skim through it. I'll probably do a time lapse type of thing and then I'll catch back up with you when it's running. Alright, so Easy to Boot is working off the USB drive. However, for some reason it's running in USB 1 um, speed, which is something that a lot of these BIOSes do when they're booting from a USB drive. That's when they're some of these older BIOSes, they don't support booting in full speed, which is extremely frustrating when you're trying to get through an installation quickly. This is going to take absolutely forever. But it's still going to be better and less effort for me than trying to go claw through all the driver files to find the right thing, go find a floppy drive, make sure it works, plug it into the right port, you know, sideload the drivers, blah blah blah. I'm just going to use easy to boot anyway because I think it'll work better. But it is going to take absolutely forever and I'm probably going to skip through a lot of this. So I'll put a link in the description to Phil's computer lab video on how to do this. Um, but for now, honestly, I will just report back later when this is finally done. So I'm over here with this this machine again and finally got it working. I say finally because well first of all I, I, the camera battery ran out again so I missed a little bit but I had a lot of trouble installing Windows and the whole issue turned out to be this second hard drive that I added. There's something possibly shorted out in it and it was just tanking the um, the BIOS wouldn't even, it wouldn't boot or anything with that hard drive plugged in. So um, I tried using a different SATA controller, I tried everything. So it seems like that's, that didn't work out so well. Um, but I've got it installed. Um, I've got drivers and everything else. And I think we're gonna, we're gonna start running some benchmarks. So I'll let you know how it does here in a minute. What in the snot? Oh. So I just installed the unofficial service pack 4. I think it's taken me through this again because I haven't officially done it yet. I'm on. So I had another issue after I installed it completely where 
it just started blue screening and I had to start from scratch and it turned out to be oh, here we go the issue turned out to be that the driver I installed for the um, SATA drive uh, SATA controller wasn't working so this time only sound network and video were installed Alright, so I've got the unofficial service pack 4, and I've got this batch file which just runs a quick re-registration on the MSI exec program. And the reason it does that is to fix a Windows installer error. So if you install unofficial service pack 4 and you see that, now you know what to do. And that's it. Ta-da! Now we're good to go. I'm going to arrange my icons. I don't have any themes or anything on here yet, but we're just going to start off with 3D Mark 2000. So all the old 3D Marks are free on uh, at a, on Future Marks website. So if you just Google 3D Mark, go to their official website, they have license keys for all of them online now, which is pretty cool. And you can in part thank Bill's Computer Lab for that. So again, thanks Phil for pretty much making this whole hobby awesome. Alright, looks like it's working okay. I So when I said I didn't have any other Pentium 4 machines, I actually do have this one, which is a similar, I want to say, similar if not exactly the same core. Um, and this one's a little bit different setup. I think I've got two hard drives in here, one for XP and one for 98, just kind of as a test. I don't know what I'm going to do with this one yet. Admittedly, it didn't really work very well, to be honest. Um, it has some, I don't know if it's driver issues, or there was something really slow about it. Maybe it's overheating. I don't really know, so we're going to hold off on that one for a little while. But on this one, I haven't had any issues. It seems to run pretty flawlessly. Um, if there's wind noise, I apologize. It's March in Texas, so the air conditioner's on. All right, well, I'll get you updated with the results as they come in. All right, guys, it's basically done at this point, so we're gonna go ahead and put the case back on it. Um, I am leaving some of these down in here including this extra drive. We'll come back to that at a later time, and I just don't, I mean, good as place, good a place as any to uh, to keep it. I really like this case though, I don't really know if I talked much about this. This is one I picked up used here a while back. It does need some cleaning, which I'll do in a second, but you hit this button and the front slides down this little track here, and then you can reach the, the drives, and then you can see the drive lights through there, or you can close it up. I don't know, I just think it's kind of cool. 90s case, I think. Anyway. So. I think what we're going to do is start cleaning it up. So I'll make, I'll put that on video and then we'll, we'll start. Um, I already did some benchmarks, but we'll, we'll run one for the, for the camera and do some other game tests and stuff. And then we'll talk about the results. Well, I was all set to, to start filming the final montage, and suddenly it wouldn't boot. And it turns out, so I, I went through a few different um, a few different things, including replacing the, the power supply that was making that terrible whining noise. Um, I, so I replaced that with another one that I had laying around. And the issue is, seems to be, anyway, the SATA controller. If I unplug the SATA controller, the SATA drives, I mean, it'll boot. It'll start booting until it gets to the point where it needs to access a drive and then it freaks out. And then I have to leave it off for a few minutes and then I turn it back on. And 
the reason I'm suggesting that it's the SATA drive is actually because I've seen this before years ago on a couple of computers I had. I don't remember what chipset they had. It might have even been the same SIS chipset, but whatever. So I think what we're going to do is actually throw an FAE drive in here real quick. I know that controller works okay. I don't. I would use a PCI one, but I don't really want to block off a video card, and I've got plenty of IDE drives anyway, honestly. So, whatever. I'm just gonna throw a throw in an IDE drive in here, set it up again, and we'll uh, pick up from there with the montage. Found another issue that I'm sure wasn't helping. This doesn't work. At least not in there. This is one gigabyte of DDR4. There we go. Yeah. Well, it won't focus, but one of the RAM sticks was not showing up, so I took it out. And I thought that might be the issue with the uh, the SATA drives, but I tried putting those in again, and as it turns out, it still didn't work. So now it's got this IDE drive in it, and I'm over here installing Windows again. Oh, the joys of working with crappy old computers. Well, so I'm not really sure what is wrong with it, but it keeps locking up randomly, and then when you reset it, it'll just sit there and fail to post for a couple minutes. Yeah, look at this. Oh. Yeah, now that I've set it, it's going to work fine. But it's definitely got some instability problems. I might try flashing the BIOS or something. But overall, it's definitely not acting like something I would want to use right at the moment, so... Um, and I don't know if it it may need capacitors, it is from that era, but they all looked fine. Um, I know that's not the only way to tell. But maybe we'll maybe we'll find another motherboard we can put in this case. So far we're, we're two for two making motherboards that this guy didn't like, so we gotta figure out something to do with it, but for now I, I guess it's working, so we'll probably keep trying to run run with it and just see how far we can get but it's disappointing that it's it's crashing again even with the ID controller so who knows maybe it's just the onboard controller in general is bad but I think more likely it's something more serious with the motherboard anyway so no montage on this one yet it's gonna go back on the shelf as like an uncompleted project maybe or I might just hook it up under the desk or we might find another motherboard that we can put in it. Maybe that's why this one was so cheap. In fact, I have another motherboard to put in here to replace this purple one. And maybe we'll use that. That's a socket 732 or whatever it is board. And that's only running at 1.4 gigahertz, but it is also an AGP card. And that's the reason I was making this is this base, this computer was basically based around that video card that's in there so if it doesn't work it doesn't work that's fine I'm not too bent up about it but maybe we can at least still put together a cool card with a cool computer with an HP card in it well you can see it's back on the shelf that didn't really last long I'm trying to figure out what would be the next thing to do in there I was thinking of putting this this one together um, sticking this one in there this motherboard and I still might do that the thing is this motherboard matches the case pretty well that it's in and I do have another motherboard I could use in here in this one I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna do but I am pretty tired so I'm gonna call it for tonight and unfortunately I mean that's how it goes with some of these old projects you don't always win them all and didn't win this one I think that there are some things wrong with that motherboard and we're probably just not going to be able to use this one which is disappointing but we'll track another one down maybe uh, I mean personally I think that's the reason one of the reasons the uh, the these processors got such bad uh, backlashes because of lack of support uh, or lack of supporting hardware everything was so crappy for them that how do you like them when you know, capacitors and motherboards are going bad, but on the other hand, 
machines like this XPS Gen 5, I've never had a single issue with this thing, and that's the next generation, it's a Pentium uh, D, I guess, but and it has all the memory management issues that a Pentium D does, but it's a great computer, so can't really complain about that one. Just wish some of the other ones were alright. I've got a lot of dead Pentium 4 stuff that I need to figure out. Maybe it's capacitors. Who knows? I'll check it out later, but for now, you have a good night. So, it's too bad that that project really didn't work out, but I wanted to introduce kind of the next project and hopefully we'll get one going at some point here. So this is a one of those clear acrylic cases. I forget what exact brand it was. Um, but right now I've got a motherboard in there that's AGP 4X um, with one of those weird socket AMD processors. Anyway, not the fastest thing and I think that it would be good to try and make it a hybrid Windows 98, Windows XP machine and I'm gonna put that motherboard in this case which is funny because it's actually been in that case three times, but, or maybe we'll put it in a different case, I don't know, we'll figure something out, but what I wanted to introduce is this guy. So this is a pretty nice MSI motherboard with AGP 8X support, overclocking, and uh, all sorts of fancy features, and when I got this one, it didn't work at all, it had a few bad capacitors, ended up finally replacing them, just uh, these ones on the power rail here. And magically the motherboard works now, so that was one of the rare cases for me in which replacing the capacitors actually did fix the issue I was looking at, so I think this motherboard is probably good to go now, and I think that that would be a nice, I mean, nice red MSI motherboard with a red video card in the clear case there. I think it'll look pretty cool. So I think that's going to be the next project. So if you like this video, if you like me working on projects, uh, like and subscribe and all that crap and you'll see more of them, I hope.